Alright, I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's report. Uh, we've got a lot of good fishing to cover, but before I get into the details, I'd like to take a moment to uh, talk about the weather. Unlike uh, earlier this year, it seems like the weather straightened out a bit across Southern California, and this weekend looks like it got good weather throughout the bite. Um, but it looks like all day long, with not a whole lot of west wind in the afternoons. That being said, we've got uh, some warm weather uh, inland, you know, highs in the 100 plus, and uh, a lot of times when that happens, the, uh, it'll get windy, uh, west wind in the afternoon on the water. So they're not calling for that. I think it's due to the weather pattern. I think it's just some kind of monsoonal thing over Arizona or something like that. I don't even look that far into it. But um, despite the fact that they're not calling for it, sometimes when it gets really hot, whatever is causing that heat will break down and it will be windy on the ocean. So if you get out there and it's windier than forecast, just rest assured it's going to continue to be so uh, as the day wears on. So, uh, you know, if you're somewhere a lot further offshore than you should be in a rough day and it starts to get rough, I would just start heading home if you're on a smaller boat. So uh, let's go to this week's map. Okay, starting up at the Channel Islands. Um, we had some really good sea bass fishing up there uh, earlier this week. Today's Wednesday, and um, I know that Sunday over the weekend, Monday, Tuesday, the boats really waylaid those big sea bass up there. I mean, they're biting the flukes, they're biting bait. I saw even saw I got some guys getting on a surf siren up there. Um, that bite, I think, is 100% related to the full moon that we have here on Wednesday night, the uh, buck moon, as they call it. Um, These fish always bite going into or coming off these moons at this time of year, it seems like. So by the time you're watching this, that information is not going to do you any good because the moon will be over and the bite will probably return back to normal. I really doubt it will stay as good as it was. I mean, there was boats getting two-day limits and one day and all this other stuff. So um, something to keep in mind, you know, these fish are still biting our next full moon. Going into the next full moon, that might be a good time to plan your trip. And uh, if you're thinking further out, you might want to consider that for next year's fishing plans as well. The uh, sea bass and tuna, especially bluefin, this moon plays a big role in what they're doing and uh, getting on a trip around that full moon can really improve your chances of, uh, of catching some fish. Aside from the sea bass, the uh, fishing's pretty good up there. They're catching, you know, boats fishing rockfish are loading up. Guys fishing the islands are getting calicos, nice barracuda. Guys fishing along the beach are getting barracuda, calicos, and sand bass. Just good steady summer fishing up there. Really uh, consistent, you know, it's uh, nice weather, so go up there and just have some fun, see if you get sea bass, if not, go fish for something else. I'm going to head down to uh, Nick and uh, SBI for a change here. I know I've been kind of skipping them. So there's been some uh, some yellows and sea bass and biting at, at Santa Barbara Island recently, and uh, it's very hit and miss out there, as always. It's a very stingy, horrible place to fish, but... Uh, there's been some bluefin around the island as well, so if you go out there, at least you got something else to look for. We'll talk more about that when I get to the offshore stuff. Um, Nick really hasn't gotten a lot of coverage, but I would expect there's probably yellows biting there as well. Um, some of the overnight boats out of uh, out of Long Beach or San Pedro may run up that way this weekend. If uh, if Clemente's uh, closed by the Navy or, or something like that, I don't know, but it might be a good uh, good guess up that way. Um, speaking of Clemente. Uh, continued good fishing down there on the front side of the island. Boats just doing a normal summertime pattern, anchoring up along the front, fishing yellows, catching nice bass in the meantime. Um, all the boats are recommending bringing a, a, a fly line rig, you know, 20 25 pound test with a, you know, a appropriately sized hook for a sardine. It's been getting most of the bites, but yeah, these fish, when they're on the front like that and they're on fin bait, they'll always bite a jig. If you like to throw the surface iron and go do that. Um, if you're on a sport boat and you want to throw the surface iron and you guys are anchored up along the front side of the island, you know, you're normally positioned uphill or downhill at the island, uh, due whichever way the current's going. Um, a good way to get bit without seeing you seeing out of the mess in the back is I'll just go up in the bow and I'll, I'll watch for birds that are actively looking. A lot of times the, uh, not all the chum goes with the current, some of it gets pushed back up towards the bow by fish and those fish will be up there picking off sardines or anchovies, whatever they're chumming. And, um, and you got a good chance of picking one off on the surface iron. So if you're up there doing that, I would stay up there. Don't just cast blindly. I would stand there ready with your rod and wait for birds to start looking like you're looking at fish. If they're flying around, they lock in, they start to go towards the water. 
get a jig in the air and get that thing landed right where they're going to, you know, come down because that they're coming down on a bait fish that's being pushed up by a yellowtail. Um, same holds true with private boaters. If you're out there and you see birds acting that way, you know, you're better off fishing a jig than you are soaking a bait. The sea lion's probably going to eat anyway. But, um, yeah, boats have a good steady fishing over there. Uh, yellows, calicos, stuff like that. You've always got a shot of the bluefin coming or going this time of year. Um, Calpati yellows are maybe a Dorado on the way there or back if you're on your own boat. Uh, keep an eye open for kelps. Um, not much to report from Catalina, so I'm going to skip that today. Uh, down along the coast, still some barracuda being caught up in the Santa Monica Bay. Still good bass fishing, most areas. It's just summertime fishing there. You know, calicos in the kelp. Sand bass and calicos on the, on the wrecks and reefs, pipes, things like that. That's basically the same story from Santa Barbara to San Diego right now. If you just, you know, go fish your normal stuff, um, you'll catch bass. Uh, I've been hearing some word about water rolling in different areas and off-color water. So if you're, uh, if you're heading out, the water's a lot colder than you're expecting or really dirty, I would just keep going and look for another spot. Sometimes you only go even a mile and you can find a, a, a color and temperature break. One of the coast, the upwelling is very sporadic and irregular. So, they, you know, you can drive someplace, you can go 100 feet and the water will be completely different. It's not like offshore when the whole thing rolls and you're just, you know, you're just forced to deal with that water. Just keep driving until you find something good, you know, find a current break, find a ridge that's breaking. So the, uh, these color changes and temperature changes will be relegated to those areas mostly. So, chances are a lot better if you keep driving and find something that's got some cleaner water in it. Um, heading out of the Coronados, still biting down there. Boats are getting some yellows. Not as many as they were, but, uh, you know, it's hit and miss. They're also getting some nice bass and barracuda when they're anchored up fishing. Um, with the offshore bite improving, the full day boats are starting to get away from the Coronados. Again, I know the San Diego said that uh, Sunday is going to be their last day of fishing the islands. They're going back to offshore fishing. But um, other boats are, you know, Point Loma, Mission Bell, I'm sure. A bunch of the other Malahini probably are going to be continuing to fish the islands. And uh, private boaters are doing, there as well, doing good there as well. Uh, I saw some reports of guys that went down. Uh, my friend Matt Ware was down there, I don't know when, Monday or Tuesday, and he had, you know, a few nice yellows, a lot of big calico bass. Um, you know, they're, they're just fishing lures, so you can go throw the iron, throw a swim bait or hard bait, probably just have a fun day of fishing down there in your own boat. Um, yeah, you know, let's take a look at the stuff offshore. You know, the... Uh, I mentioned last week that on the next full moon things might change up again here, and uh, they did. And um, the bluefin started biting better for boats in U.S. waters, but before I get into that, we'll talk about the stuff down in San Diego. Um, the, uh, I know the Liberty was out, and the Grande had some good yellowtail fishing on, on kelps. They're getting yellows, they're getting nice sized bonita, some. Uh, Dorado, stuff like that. There's a few yellowfin around up here, but most of it's still down south. Um, there hasn't been much reported on the yellowfin this last week because most of the boats that were fishing them are now fishing bluefin in U.S. waters. Um, so, you, you know, private boat, if you want to stretch your legs a little bit, run down towards Ensenada, you might be able to find some fish you could have by yourself. Uh, there have been some bluefin that showed back up here near San Diego and along, also along the coast in U.S. waters, but the, uh, the bite that was happening cut in front of Catalina kind of dried up. And uh, what was interesting was right before those fish split, um, they started biting a lot better going into that full moon. My buddy Jonathan went out um, late last week, and after going out the week before, you know, casting on foamers all day and getting no bites at all, he pulled up on his first foamer, took his first cast, popped it twice, and caught a nice fish. And uh, called the day early, you know. So that's kind of uh, the way it happens. Those fish don't bite, don't bite, don't bite, and then they bite everything in front of them. So speaking of those bluefin, um, the sport boats out of San Diego and the long range boats are fishing well outside and above San Clemente Island. And uh, that's pretty much effectively out of private boat range unless you've got a bigger yacht or something like that or a, one of those real big center consoles or something. But, you know, a guy like me in a 22-footer, um, I'm not going to be able to make that run. It's just too far. But um, that being said, um, when those fish bite out there, historically, over the last few years, they've also bitten in other areas closer to home. And um, before I get into that, the, 
the bite outside, you know, that's gone back into that full moon pattern again, where these fish are biting at night, biting night jigs, real easy fishing some nights, tougher fishing during the day. So much like with the sea bass, you know, if you want to go catch bluefin that are going to be biting during the summer and you want to have a chance of loading up on them instead of just looking at them, I would try and schedule our trips leading up to a full moon. Um, it seems to be the pattern in the last few years. But, uh, you know, they got the long range boats are out there getting them, the overnight boats, day and a half boats. If you're going to go up to that area, I'd say do at least a one and a half day, maybe a two day trip to give you more fishing time. Uh, at least, you know, one full night, because it is pretty far. And um, you don't need to go away to San Diego to get on trips to do this. I know the, uh, uh, I think it was, uh, one of the boats out of Redondo, maybe the Navigante went out there and caught them the other night. And it's actually closer to Redondo than it is to San Diego. So, and, you know, the boats uh, up here don't really have the amenities that the San Diego boats have always. But uh, if you live up here, it seems kind of silly to drive all the way down there to run all the way back up. Um, so getting back to what I was saying about their fish being in other areas. So those fish that were along the beach inside of Catalina moved on. But they didn't just evaporate, so they went other places. So where did, where did they go? You know, I was asking myself that uh, yesterday. And just, you know, when I saw the fish were biting on the outside, I knew of three or four different areas that there would likely be fish as well. And um, one of those areas was up by Santa, Santa Barbara Island, and that was confirmed by a report that I heard from somebody. Um, they saw fish. They weren't biting, but there were fish around. So basically that gives me an idea that, hey, you know, I know the fish are biting out there. I got five or six different spots that I can go and check them out as well and have a good chance of, of finding fish. And um, that's not because I go out and fish tuna all the time either. That's just because over the last few years, these fish have been very, very predictable as to where they go. So even if you're not in the water and you're just seeing where people are catching fish or hearing those things, um, I could have dope from three years ago that will still apply today. It's like one of those, those, those test questions, if this, then that kind of thing. So if they're outside off the west end of Clemente, they're likely to be in this spot, this spot, and this spot. And they're not, probably not in all of them, but most of those spots are close enough that you can check them all out in one day, and it's a really good chance you're gonna find some fish when you do. So um, speaking of finding fish, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about, the other, well last week I talked a bit about um, changing my game plan on the water and going and looking in different areas. And um, I want to expand a little bit on what to actually look for when we're looking for fishy looking water. And your best friend on your boat, your own boat, I don't care if you've got an 18 footer or a 60 footer, is a pair of stabilized binoculars. And um, if you're like me on a budget, the Fujinon Techno Stabbies 14 by 40 is the older model I have. Um, my buddy Jonathan just got the newer ones. They're pretty nice too, even nicer than these. But um, these are an invaluable tool. These guys bring you over $1,000 probably right around there. I don't know the exact price, but um, they're worth every penny because they allow you to look great distances and not have to run around blindly or burn fuel or waste your time. So when, when I'm out looking, I am not trolling. I am not doing anything other than driving, stopping, glassing, driving, stopping, glassing. So um, with the stabilized binoculars, if you're not familiar with them, these are these Fujinons. They're uh, digitally stabilized, kind of like a, a camera. A DSLR will have that stabilization. Your GoPro makes the image steady when uh, you look through it, when everything's moving around. If you got the money, invest in a pair of uh, gyroscopic binoculars. You're going to be way better off, but they're, I mean, they're $4,000 or more. Um, so if you got that in your budget, get them. If you don't, get yourself some techno stabbies. And um, what I'll do when I, let's say I'm gonna approach uh, a bank to go look for something, or I have a plan, like I was talking last week about running out to the 14 mile bank. Um, when I run out to that bank, I'm gonna stop somewhere within maybe two miles of the highest spot of that bank, and I will stop the boat entirely if it's calm. If it's not calm, I will angle the boat in such a way that I have the calmest possible ride and I will just barely have the boat in gear. So I'm barely going, you know, one mile an hour, one and a half miles an hour, and I will glass for an extended period of time. And I'm not doing this. That's what you see guys do. That's what you think you should do. I am looking like this and I'm moving it over a couple inches and I'm looking like this. And it could take you 
three or four minutes to glass around the entire boat. But what you're looking for is not foamers necessarily, but you might be looking for one, one or two turns that are a mile and a half away. If you're doing this, you're not gonna see them. And if you have regular binoculars, you're not gonna see them. So you really need to slow down. And if you find some birds, if I'm on nothing, and I finally find a few birds flying around looking, I will watch those birds for 30, 40 seconds. I'll just keep them in the glasses and see what they're doing. If they're not just flying, if they're looking, if they're picking, and I'll look under them and you'll see things. You'll pick up little signals and things like that. If I don't see anything after I've done a complete 360 of the boat, I'm comfortable that I can run another three miles before I stop again, even four miles, because um, your effective viewing range from, you know, a, a skiff at water level on a calm day with stabilized binoculars, you could probably look pretty effectively up to about two miles. Um, if you're higher up, you can look further, but at two miles, it's going to be a pretty big spot of birds for you to spot it. You know, uh, a few turns, you're going to see them at a mile, maybe three quarters of a mile, half a mile. But while, so let's say I glass around, I don't see anything. I'm not going to just drive blindly out to the middle of nowhere and glass again. What I will do, let's say I'm at the bottom edge of the 14, a mile bank, now I'm going to run up the outside or the inside edge of that along the base of the curve while looking side to side as I'm running that distance and I'm not going 30 miles an hour. I'm going maybe 16, 18 miles an hour, and I've got one person looking off each side of the boat. So if this is the bow, we're looking at this angle. You don't need to look at the bow because the boat's gonna run it over, you're gonna get it on your peripheral vision. If you're looking any further out than that, it goes by too quickly for you to get a good look at it. So about a 30 degree angle off the bow on each side with somebody looking intently, not talking, not uh, drinking a soda, nothing like that, just looking. And then once I get that distance where I know I've looked at all this water already, and then the same distance again, I will stop and look again. So I'm gonna focus most of looking on the banks themselves. When I pull up to the edge of the 14 mile bank, for example, and I'm on the inside edge, the majority of my looking is gonna be at the bank as opposed to open water. I'm gonna look at open water, but chance of finding fish out there are a little bit slimmer than they are in, uh, right on the bank. And uh, the same holds true when you're running in open water with no relation to the structure and you're seeing something, be it a birds or bait or a scum line from a current break, maybe a couple patties in a row, be a temperature break, color break, those types of things. If I see any deviation from what I've been seeing, I will um, stop and glass around. And in doing so, I'm gonna take a look around the immediate area and see if I'm actually seeing anything that's happening. Um, and when it comes to these types of situations, you know, a current break could be 100 miles long or 20 miles long. So the chance of you intersecting it right where the fish are are pretty slim, but that doesn't mean there's gonna be fish associated with it like there would be with a piece of structure. So if I'm running and I see a hard break of some sort or a change in what's happening, I'll stop the boat and I'll glass around. If I see any signs of life, no matter how minor, I will try and run along that break for a distance, maybe three or four miles, but at this point you're gonna run pretty quickly. You can run 30 miles an hour down to the next spot glass run again, whereas when you're looking along banks, you're better off running at a slower speed so you can get a good look around. If you're running along a current break, you don't need to do that because you're running along a hard edge. So you can just drive fast to the next spot and then start looking again. Um, the last thing is, you know, if you're going out going to fish kelp patties or something like that, like a lot of guys will probably do this weekend, um, looking through your binoculars helps find those as well. But, you know, in low light conditions, we'll have that, you know, that gray overcast sky in the morning. Uh, kelp can be pretty hard to pick out, unlike when it's sunny or windy when they show up real obvious. So if it's, uh, if it's gray and calm and it's hard to spot stuff, um, a great way to look for patties is to look down swell. And rather than glass at a particular point on the horizon, what I'll tend to do is I will find a, a, a distance that's come from maybe a quarter mile away from the boat further than I can see with my naked eye. And I'll watch, and I'll watch a swell. I'm looking down swell. And I'll track the swell as it goes downhill. And if there's a patio, you'll see it roll over the swell. Whereas looking at the horizon, it's kind of hard to spot it. And then you can take, you know, two or three different angles, take two or three minutes, run again. And when you're looking for these patties, if you find one, uh, and if there's going to be others around, they're going to be in a north-south uh, direction of that patty because the 
typical summer current runs uphill. So uh, if you're in open water and you find a paddy, they're going to be north or south of one another if there's more. If you find a paddy near the edge of a bank, the paddy is most likely going to be in orientation with the edge of that bank. So rather than just drive north or south, I will follow the contour edge that I'm on on that bank and look side to side. But um, yeah, get yourself some good binoculars, put them to use. If you're not burning through a set of batteries every trip or two, you're not looking enough. And uh, batteries are cheap, fuel is not. So get out there, use your binoculars, and uh, good luck if you're fishing this weekend.